Hi everyone, my name is Haley Faustin and this case study is on gestational trophoblastic disease. A 19-year-old woman in the 18th week of pregnancy presents to the emergency department complaining of vaginal bleeding. Additional history reveals two previous pregnancies, both of which ended in spontaneous abortions. By physical examination, her uterine size is more consistent with the 24th week of gestation. Her vagina contains blood and a few grape-like vesicles are noted protruding from the cervical os. By ultrasound examination, her endometrial cavity is filled with multiple vesicles, so-called snowstorm pattern. A fetus is not identified. Serum beta HCG is 500,000. Dilation and curatage is productive of abundant bloody grape-like vesicles. The patient does well after the curatage is discharged two days later and is lost to follow-up. Four months after the discharge, she has a grand mal seizure and is rushed to the emergency department where she begins to cough up blood. A chest x-ray reveals multiple pulmonary nodules bilaterally and a transbronchial biopsy is performed. Her serum beta HCG is 600,000. Gestational trophoplastic disease is a term that encompasses a wide range of conditions arising from abnormal development of placental tissue. These disorders include the hydatiform moles, also known as HMs, invasive moles, gestational choriocarcinoma, and placental site trophoplastic disease. The hydatiform mole is a disease resulting from an atypical growth of the trophoplastic cells that would normally develop into the placenta. It starts at the time of fertilization due to a defective union of the sperm and ovum, which causes an aberrant proliferation of trophoplastic tissue that rapidly fills the uterine space. Placental villi fill with fluid and become edematous, grape-like structures. HMs occur in approximately 1 in 600 therapeutic abortions and in 1 in 15,000 pregnancies. As with the case study on the um, previous slide, she had a history of two spontaneous abortions in the past, and she also presented with these grape-like structures during examination. Um, also, during a molar pregnancy, there is no identifiable fetal tissue when the ultrasound is performed. And a uh, clinical presentation or indicator of this disease would be high levels of HCG, also known as a human chorionic gonadotropin. Um, this is because um, the rapid growth of trophoplastic tissue in this pregnancy produced this unusually high level of HCG. Um, one of the first symptoms of a molar pregnancy may be vaginal bleeding during the first trimester. This is because of trophoplastic tissue um, deteriorating. Blood clots may form between the trophoplastic villi and the endometrial lining. And as these blood clots disintegrate, the woman will experience dark red vaginal bleeding and possibly the passage of some of those trophoplastic tissues as well. Um, during this ultrasound, a uh, snowstorm pattern, which is the classic sign of a molar pregnancy, will present just as a case study presented as well. This is because of the swollen villi and trophoplastic hyperplasia in this uterus space will create this snowstorm appearance. Um, after evacuation of this motor, molar pregnancy, HCG, level, HCG levels have to be monitored um, to make sure that these levels come down. Um, just, just as this case study, the patient, she had her curatage and she did fine after that but was lost to follow up so they couldn't um, monitor her HCG levels to make sure they were coming down. Um, if they do not come down and they have uh, potential to develop um, gestational trophoplastic neoplasm um, in the future. So this is what she developed when she came in after this period of not following up. Um, the choriocarcinoma develops when abnormal trophoplastic tissue evolves into an epithelial malignancy and this occurs in 1 in 20,000 to 40,000 pregnancies. Um, there's a high incidence of vascular invasion with the resultant high risk of early systemic metastasis. And the most common sites of invasion are the lungs, which is in 80% of the cases, also the vagina, brain, and liver. Um, and unusual bleeding occurs with this GTN, such as hemoptysis. And in the case um, study patient. She came in with a grand mal seizure and then she started coughing up blood. 
Um, the trophoplastic tumors in choriocarcinoma develop a vascular system that contains fragile blood vessels. And this is where this hemorrhage is coming from. Um, choriocarcinoma is usually treated with either single agent or multiple agent chemotherapies and just follow up to make sure that this does not come back also with the repeat HCG levels. They will see um, with the treatment, the HCG levels coming down. Um, and yeah, that's all. Thank you.